start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play. I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello everyone, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today, our program is about seeds, and we're going to be learning all about gardening. Hmm, I'm interested to see what Jesus had to say about seeds and gardening and all of that. It's going to be really fun. And we have a really fun sharing time, and a craft time, and story time, and activity time, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So make sure to watch from the very beginning all the way to the end so that you are able to hear the whole program and participate in all the different fun things. So let's see, before we get to our sharing time though, what do we do first? Let's write, let's start with some singing. and sweet with flowers, blessed with heaven's sunshine, cheered by gentle showers. Violets are the kind words, roses deeds of love, fragrant pinks and pansies, thoughts of God above. Beautiful flowers, beautiful flowers,
guys, we want to show you an experiment that we've been observing for a while. We made our own root viewer and watched the plants grow. This is what it looks like now. The plants have been growing for about four weeks. The plants on this side are peas, the plants in the middle are radishes, and the plants on this side are marigold flowers. We wanted to watch and see the seeds sprout and the plants to pop the dirt and see what it looked like. Seeds are incredible little power plants that can provide all kinds of necessary ingredients that keep our planet healthy. So we thought it would be fun to watch this process. We planted the seeds right close to the edge of the glass so that we could see what would happen. A really neat thing that we did with this experiment was to take this little camera right here and set it up in front of the plants just like that. And then when we planted the plants, it took a picture every five minutes and then put them into a video. Do you want to see what that video looked like? In order for those little plants to grow, they need three main ingredients, water, warmth, and oxygen. As soon as the little roots started shooting down to the dirt, they soaked up all the water that they could and the plants grew. And then the shoot of the plant just almost exploded up through the dirt so that it could absorb sunlight. Next, the little leaves started popping out so they could soak up as much sunlight as possible and convert it into energy and oxygen. Energy and oxygen are two very important things that plants contribute to the environment. They produce plenty of clean oxygen for people and animals to breathe. When we eat, we gain the energy from them so that we can work and play. Every seed is a little powerhouse waiting to become a plant. It is an amazing example of God's creative power. The Bible has so many verses about seeds and plants. One of my favorites is very short. It says, the seed is the word of God. So when we plant these little seeds, we can think that it's like planting God's word in our own heart. Now we really want to make sure that our heart is really good soil, like the potting soil that we used in our experiment, so that the roots can go deep and the plants can grow and produce a lot of fruit. If you would like to do this experiment yourself, take a jar or a plastic cup or a container that is transparent and put some soil in it. We use potting soil because it's nice and soft and it's fertile. And you poke the seeds in close to the outside of your container so that when they sprout, you'll be able to see them. Then, if you are using a container like ours that doesn't have holes in the bottom, you wanna be careful to not overwater it. We just watered it like a couple times a day with a spray bottle like this one. Ask your parents if you can do this sometime because it's pretty cool. This week, let's ask Jesus to help us have our hearts made of good soft soil. So when the seeds of God's word are planted, they can just spring up like a plant. See you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight is a video sent to us by Winter. Location, Nairobi, Kenya. Boy T, a leopard tortoise that lives on campus, is about 20 to 25 years old based on his cute growth rings. He's a vegetarian who eats cabbage, carrots, and apples. Thank you, God, for allowing Winter to spend time with him and you each morning. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it! Today's lesson is all about seeds and plants. And Jesus loved talking about nature, didn't he? It is God's second book, and we can learn so much about God through nature. So let's pray and then start learning from what Jesus taught us about seeds. Thank you, dear God, for being with us right here, right now, for caring about us, and for teaching us so many things about your love. Send your spirit now and help us to learn more about you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, Today's lesson is called Stories and Seeds. Jesus loved teaching people outside. I like to do that when I was a teacher too. And on this day, he was teaching by the Sea of Galilee. A crowd had gathered on shore, sick people were healed, and so many people were there on the beach that there was simply not enough room. So as Jesus had done before, what did he do? He got into a boat and they pushed off a little ways and he taught 
from a boat. That sounds like fun, right? How would you like to have school on a beach and have your teacher be in a boat? That would be cool. And he could see farmers on the hillsides all around the Sea of Galilee, and that got him to thinking. Jesus liked to use lessons that were all around the people that they could understand, right? And so he decided to start teaching them lessons from growing seeds. And in Matthew 13 is where we're going to pick up this story. Matthew 13, verse 3. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament, the big 13 and a little 3. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. Now, today we don't necessarily call farmers sowers, but, and it's not like sewing, like sewing a shirt that got a hole in it. Sewing in this case is S-O-W, and that means to put seeds into the ground. So you maybe have been a sower before and you didn't even know it. A sower is someone who plants seeds in the ground. Farmers lived in strong cities during that time, and then they would go outside the city wall to plant their fields. Unlike today, where farmers oftentimes live out in the countryside right by their fields, right? The seeds in this parable fell in four different kinds of ground. All the seeds were good, and that's an important thing to remember. One group of seeds fell on the hard path beside the field. What happened in that case? Well, they couldn't get down into the hard dirt, so the birds came and thought, mmm, snack time, or mmm, supper time, and ate up all the seeds before they had a chance to grow. The second group of seeds fell where there were stones and rocks. Now, what happened here? They grew up really fast, but there wasn't enough soil for the, for the roots to go down deep into the earth, and so they quickly died and withered away. The next group fell into the thorns and briars. And they tried to grow, but those weeds and thorns choked the seeds so that they couldn't grow to their full potential. And the last group of seeds, the fourth group, fell on the good ground. Matthew 13 verse 8 says, Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. That means they made food or whatever it was that they were growing, right? Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. But they had a good crop, a lot of product coming out of those seeds that fell on the good ground. When Jesus was talking about this, he talked about it in a a parable. And afterwards, the disciples said, that was a little confusing, Jesus. Could you explain it to us more clearly? And so he did. And he said, the sower in this story is the son of God. Who's that? Jesus, right? The sower left the city just like Jesus left heaven. And the seed, the good seed, all of which that he used, he only used good seed, right, is the word of God. Jesus came to put God's word into our hearts, right? And into our minds, just like he put the seeds into the grounds in the story. But hearts and minds have different kinds, right? And they're accepted in different ways. The ground actually represents different kinds of hearts. And this is our choice, right? So when I hear something, it might affect me differently than if Miss Ruthie hears something. It might affect her differently. She might get something else out of it, right? And the hard ground, remember that was the first type of ground? That was where there was a lot of sin in that heart, right? And they couldn't hear it. They just couldn't hear it. I think about the Pharisees, right? They couldn't hear it, and they didn't want to apply it, and they just don't care. And so, kind of like Satan or his angels would come and take away that message from them because they just don't care. They don't want to hear it. The stony ground he likened to people who are being selfish. They want to do right, but they just don't want to stop their bad habits, right? So like the truth starts to grow in them, but as soon as any kind of trouble or persecution comes, then they don't want any more of it. We're like, that's too hard, right? That's like what the stony ground represented. They try to be good, but it's hard to change their bad habits because you can't change your bad habits by yourself. You have to depend on who? Jesus, that's right. Now, let's talk about the third type of ground, the third type of heart, right? The third third type of heart was the weedy heart. They don't spend enough time with God. Maybe they love money and toys and fun, having fun way more than they love God. And they worry about their problems instead of giving them to Jesus. Sometimes I have a weedy heart, I'm going to be honest. They're so busy helping people even. It can be like a good thing, but they don't take time to do what they should do, like read the Bible and pray and grow themselves. I think of myself sometimes in that, and I think about Martha, also in the Bible, could have kind of like a weedy heart. And when that happened then they couldn't really grow really well, right? The weeds of this world, the troubles of this world, um, the cool things, 
and aren't really so cool, if you really think about it, of this world, we're distracting them from the good seed, the word. Now you've come to the fourth type of heart. And this is the kind of heart that we need to ask God to give us because we can't have this kind of heart by ourselves. The good dirt, where they hear God's word, they obey. They're really sorry for their sin and they ask God for help. That's huge, right? They love God the most out of everything in this whole world and they let God change their heart, right? They let God change their heart into a loving and unselfish heart, one that bears fruit for God. Growing takes time, right? But God will give us the power and he will, he has so much patience. Like he truly loves us and he will be there for us as we grow in his love. Pretty interesting, right? Four types of heart. And we want to try to strive with Jesus's help to have that good dirt kind of heart, right? Kind of sounds funny, doesn't it? But it's true. Now, Jesus didn't just use the farming and seed example once. He used it many times, in fact, throughout his ministry. And the second story that we're going to talk about today is about a farmer who planted good seeds, and then he went home. And at night, an enemy came and sowed weeds, weed seeds, amongst the good seeds. Oh, no. In the Bible, they call them tares, but that's what a weed is, right? They look good at first, but then the end, they're not good. And in this story, Jesus was the farmer. Of course, the enemy was Satan, always is. And the good seeds were people who obey God, and the weeds or the tares were people who chose to be on the opposite team, right, and obey Satan. They're all in the same field. They're all in church, right? But God gives us a good lesson in this because we might say, oh, well, we should make sure that we take out all the tares and take out all the weeds, right? We should take out all the people who are on Satan's team and get them out of the church, right? But Jesus teaches us a good lesson here. He says, you don't know the heart. I'm the one who knows the heart. So you need to leave everybody alone, not judge, and I will take care of it in the end. Jesus will make sure everything is fair. I'm so glad that I don't have that job. I do not want to be the judge of other people. That is God's job, and I want to leave that all to him. I hope that you choose to do that too. Next time, we'll learn even more about Jesus and the amazing life that he lived here on this earth for us. Can't wait until next time. And until then, keep exploring God's word. Hello. This week, you learned about a sower sowing seeds. Have you ever planted seeds like in a garden, maybe in a little flower pot? Well, I thought it'd be fun if we make a craft today with seeds. So I have drawn on my paper here. This is what you're gonna want like cardstock, just a flower or a plant. And in a Bible verse, it says, whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. We wanna make sure we plant good seeds and we wanna be seed that's planted in good ground so we can spring up strong in the Lord. So let me show you our example. So you can just color your Bible verse in and then we're going to do a pretty design with our seeds, okay? So I am going to go ahead and grab my colors and you could pick out a bunch of different colors. You could do all your Bible verse in one color. I'm gonna pick one color, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and color it in. You could write your Bible verse in marker if you prefer. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the brown lentils and we're gonna just put a bunch of glue right in the center here. Then we're gonna sprinkle our seeds on and you can just kind of sprinkle them on and then what doesn't stick to the glue will fall off once your picture has dried. So that's okay. All right, now we're gonna do our flower petal, petals here with our red lentils. So get your glue all over this picture here. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our red lentils on. All right, so now we're going to work on the stem of our plant. So let's go ahead and put some glue on the stem. Kind of get it all around there. Now this is where you kind of want to line each one of the black beans up individually.
All right, now let's work on our leaves here. Get this all on and then we'll be done, okay? So we're gonna use just our green peas. Sprinkle that on, scoot that around. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna try to hold up our example. Okay, so can you see the example there? Whoops, there went a little more. Let me show you the one that's dried so you can see, okay? Here's our one that's dried. Well, until next time, remember to start everything you do with Jesus. Bye-bye. It's time now to answer last week's questions to see what they were and if we got them right. Are you ready? Shout out to Allison, Emmeline, Nicholas, Nia, Leah, Sangnamichu, Omega, Wangari, Garuma, David, Faith, Arisha, Riella, Isaiah, Ellie, Solomon, Reuben, Arthur, Isaiah, Alnathan, Nelson, Noah, Mia, Analia, Benji, Eliana, Denny, Ellie, Dom, Benny, Andrea, Blythe, Avery, Liam, Kaziah, Ruby, Owen, Chrysalin, Gabriel, Maje, and Kaishin. Great job answering your questions. It's question time for today's story, stories about seeds. That's right, I have three questions all ready for you guys, and I can't wait to read your three answers. <laughs> Please send them to answers at startingwithjesus.com. That email is answers at startingwithjesus.com. Truly excited to hear what you're going to share today. All right, number one, what is one lesson you have learned about God through nature? What is one lesson you have learned about God through nature? And it doesn't need to be from this story. Just anything that you've experienced in nature, what has it taught you about God? I can't wait to learn about God from you. Number two, the type of soil in today's story represented people's what? The type of soil represented people's what? And number three, who is the only one who has the job of judging people's hearts? Who is the only one who has the job of judging people's hearts? I can't wait to hear from you. Our memory verse today is found in Galatians 6-7. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians 6-7. Happy Sabbath, friends. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. Happy Sabbath, bye! Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. Bye! Happy Sabbath from Many Blessings Farm! Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. Bye! Happy Sabbath from Many Blessings Farm! Whatever a man sows that he he will also, also reap. reap. Galatians 6, six verse 7. Bye, I'm sorry. Be not deceived, God is not, not mocked. But for whatever man so that he will also reap. Galatians chapter 6, 7. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Whatever a man sow, that he will also reap. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Bye, happy Bye, This week's memory verse 
comes from Galatians 6 and 6 7. It says, For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. Keep in touch. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 7. Bye, happy Sabbath. Whatever a man soweth, whatever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. That he shall also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. Galatians 6 verse 7. Bye, happy Sabbath, friends. See you next week. This very verse is found in Galatians 6 verse 7. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Bye, happy Sabbath. Have a best week. Be not the same, guys, not mock for whatsoever. Galatians 6 verse 7. Bye, happy Sabbath. Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians 6 7. Bye, happy Sabbath. And keep in touch. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Bye, happy Sabbath from Oklahoma. Galatians 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Happy Sabbath. Five days ago, we took four of these little bean seeds outside and we left them in different places. One seed fell on the path. One seed fell on the rock. One seed fell near the thorns. One seed fell in good ground. The path, the rocks, the thorns, the good ground. Do you recognize this from the parable we learned about this week? In Matthew 13, Jesus told a parable of different places that seeds fell. The seeds represented the Word of God, and the soil 
represents our hearts. Today, we decided to go check on our beans to see how they were doing. After five days, the bean seed on the path seems to be missing. I don't know if a bird or an animal took it, but it's gone. The one on the rocks is still there, but it's not doing anything. No roots or sprout. The one in the weedy spot might be trying to grow, but this big weed is in its way. Look at the bean we planted in the garden. Good soil, sunlight, and some water. In just five days, there's already some roots. It's going to try to sprout. You can do this activity at home as well. You could use an egg crate or just four different containers. Put rocks in one, sand in another, maybe some weedy soil, and then some good potting soil. Put a seed in each one. Put them all in the sunlight and water them the same and see which seed grows. Matthew 13, 23 says, but the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. What kind of ground are you? When you go to church or school or worship, do you listen and try to obey? If you do, then your heart is like our garden soil. It's good ground. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here. Don't forget to check out our website at startingwithjesus.com to find out lots of more different things and to be able to find out about this really exciting upcoming program in December that we don't want you to miss out on. So make sure to go to startingwithjesus.com to find out more information and to be able to sign up to a newsletter to um, get updates on all the things that are happening here, as well as you can see our social media handles. We have an Instagram and a Facebook and our YouTube channel, and you can see all those different things on our website. Are you ready to pray? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you that you want to plant the seed of your love in our hearts. Help us to be like the good ground, to be able to grow those wonderful fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, kindness. Help us to have all of those in our hearts, those fruits to come out as we are working with others in our homes, in our schools, in our play. Help us to have the good fruit that you plant in our hearts. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.